powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon. It is finally Friday. Thanks so much for spending it here with us on the Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. We are following developing news this afternoon. A major earthquake has hit near Anchorage, Alaska. Now a tsunami warning has been issued in coastal areas. The preliminary magnitude is reported as a 6.7. One news station was actually knocked off the air due to this earthquake. We are still waiting on information about damages and potential injuries. This story, of course, is still developing, so you can check back for updates online. And a major development in the passage of a farm bill came in last night. The top four congressional negotiators of the massive must-pass farm bill announced an agreement in principle, paving the way for a passage by the end of the year. While details of the deal have not been released yet, CNN has confirmed that stricter work requirements for SNAP or food stamps will not be included. The controversial work requirements were part of a House bill passed this summer, but were not part of a Senate bill. The five-year farm bill is a huge piece of legislation setting the eating and farming policies in the country, including crop insurance, SNAP, and proposed changes to federal forest management policies. The previous 2014 Farm Bill expired back in September. The House and Senate separately passed their versions of the Farm Bill in June and have been locked in conference for months, hashing out their final version. A Missoula man is dead after crashing into two parked vehicles on Thursday night. Missoula Police Sergeant Travis Wells says the 26-year-old man was driving around 7.15 last night when he lost control of his vehicle and drove into two parked cars. The car tipped over on the driver's side after that collision. Wells says the man died on scene. A 24-year-old male passenger was transported to the hospital with what appeared to be non-life-threatening injuries. Neither of the men were wearing their seatbelts at the time of the crash. Missoula police are still investigating the cause of the accident. And after a deadly Thanksgiving week on Montana roads, Highway Patrol is now urging drivers to take some extra care this winter. From Monday, November 19th to the 26th, 12 people lost their lives on Montana's highways and the second deadliest seven-day period this year. While those numbers are five times higher than previous years, authorities believe winter road conditions did play a significant factor. Montana Highway Patrol with a message, make sure your vehicles are prepared, check road conditions, and always wear your seatbelt. The seatbelt keeps you inside the vehicle and structurally you're a lot safer inside of there. You know, it's a typical rollover crash than you are getting thrown around. So it's the seatbelt. Seatbelt use saves lives, it really does. This year so far, there have been 149 fatal crashes in Montana, resulting in 161 deaths. In other news, a northern Cheyenne man is behind bars in North Dakota after he allegedly killed his girlfriend and tried to pass it off as a suicide. Federal agents took 35-year-old Randy Littlebird into custody on Wednesday. He's now being held in a Bismarck jail. Court records state Littlebird's girlfriend was found dead at their home last February. BIA officers found the victim unresponsive and a rope several feet from her body. Littlebird told police the victim tried to hang herself. However, a witness who lived in the home told police a different story. He said he recalled the couple fighting earlier in the night and at one point heard the victim call out in pain and then silence. An autopsy revealed the victim died from strangulation and blunt force trauma. Littlebird has since admitted to police that he put the rope around the victim's neck and pulled it as he stood behind and above her. Well, several people are in custody after a high-speed chase through Flathead County Thursday morning. Flathead County Sheriff Chuck Curry says deputies were dispatched to a neighborhood south of Whitefish for a report of a burglary in progress around 8 a.m. Officers were told someone had fired a gun and a vehicle was seen leaving the scene. Curry says deputies and an FWP officer spotted the car and gave chase along with help from Highway Patrol and Kalispell Police. The pursuit went to a service road off KM Ranch. The car then stopped and one of the suspects tried to run. He was arrested along with some others who are believed to have been involved. Butte's Council of Commissioners were cons will consider a recommendation to give its police force a bigger pay raise. The council received the recommendation this week to give members of the Butte Police Force Protective Service Union a 2% raise. The raise will substantially increase pay of longer-serving officers, making them more on par with the pay of other law enforcement agencies around the state. We are a city county, so we have to do both city and county duties, whereas all these other cities have a police agency and a sheriff's office and those duties are split um, so that's why we feel that this median raise is 
fair compensation for what we're, we do on a day basis. The council is expected to vote on the proposed pay increase at its meeting on December 5th. Well, now we'll turn things over to Ed in the Weather Center. Ed, a storm is kind of on the way this weekend. How's it looking out there? Yeah, we're already seeing the first signs, Sammy, especially as we look into southern Montana, northern Wyoming. You can see a little bit on Doppler radar as some of those showers are starting to develop there, and you can see those blue splotches as we start looking into southern Montana, northern Wyoming. And as we go through the day today and through the weekend, we're looking at this being a progressive event. Much of the snow right now targeting areas of north central Montana. You see that around Jordan up towards Glasgow along the High Line and closer in towards uh, the Fort Peck region. Lighter snow amounts across central and western Montana, but we do have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings into effect, meaning travel concerns and areas where we could see some decent snow accumulations and some travel concerns with slick roads. More details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Ed. Well, two very close Montana legislative races are headed to a recount, one in Billings and one in Great Falls. The races, House District 51, which is South Central Billings, and House District 22, which is parts of South Central Great Falls. Republicans have been declared winners in both districts. Frank Fleming won by 17 votes over Democrat Darrell Wilson in Billings, and Representative Lola Sheldon Galloway won by 14 votes over Democrat Laura Dever in Great Falls. Those losers in each race have requested the recount and posted a bond to pay for it. The Billings recount is set for December 4th, and the Great Falls recount has yet to be scheduled. Republicans currently hold a 58 to 42 majority in the House for the upcoming session. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the new news. Coming up, Bozeman business owners weigh in on a steep increase in housing prices. But first, Ed's in with a look at the wintry weekend forecast. We will be right back. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.